I have not filmed a video in a while yet again, so I apologise for that, but today we're going to do a recent reads, aka a January and February wrap up. I haven't been reading as much as I have in previous years, but I've still read 10 books in the course of two and a bit months, so I felt like I didn't have enough to talk about for a January wrap up, and I feel like I didn't have enough to talk about for a February wrap up, but now I feel like I have enough to talk about for a overall two month recent reads wrap up type situation. So if you enjoyed this video please leave a like, please subscribe, leave a comment down below with your thoughts on any of the books I talk about and I will also say, I don't know if you can actually tell but I'm a bit stuffy right now, I have a cold that started yesterday so that's nice. Um, and yeah let's start talking about the books. I am actually really excited about the future of Penguin Classics because I have really enjoyed these Marvel Collection books which are collection of old Marvel comics set around a certain character and so far this year I have read The Amazing Spider-Man and I have read the Black Panther volumes. There's also a Captain America one I have not got to yet but these were so interesting and I think open up such a variety of options for Penguin Classics in the future that I think is really exciting. You know it really shows them like breaking the mould and giving comics like they're due which is really interesting because I feel like it's definitely a uh, underrated medium and one I personally haven't explored that much but I really enjoyed these so the Spider-Man one basically goes through all of well not all but a lot of his early comics and you see the introduction of so many like famous villains that we know from the films and everything like that they all got their start in the comics so it's really interesting to see like their very early appearances and just like the historical context that these were written in. There's really good introductions, there's um, a lot of information just about like the state of comics and also just the state of America at the time. So I found that really interesting and the same for the Black Panther one. It talks about the whole history of Black Panther and um, also you know black representation and comics and stuff like that. And then the Black Panther one is a little bit different because well these are individual stories all put together that do link together obviously like there is a continuous narrative but they're pretty much standalone stories. The Black Panther one you see a standalone story that's his very first introduction ever but then the bulk of this book is one long graphic novel that was published in different volumes obviously but is one very continuous story like the end of one directly is into the next, it's just one long narrative. So I really enjoyed that and I think that these are both fantastic books. I really want to get to the Captain America one soon and I just can't wait to see what else Penguin Classics do along this line because I think they're going to do more Marvel ones, they're definitely confirmed, but there's so many possibilities for them to explore different narratives, different mediums and franchises and stuff with this type of thing. So yeah, I think these are excellent and even if you're not really into comics, I haven't read that many comics in my life. These are really interesting starting off point um, just based on the information they give you and the selection of comics that they give and also I have to say like the colours and the pictures everything is so vibrant and beautiful like I just really loved reading these. So next I read this poetry collection by Alan Ginsberg, Howl, Kaddish and other poems. I think it's pronounced Kaddish, I don't really know, I've never seen that word before in my life and I was really excited to get to these. I thought I was going to love them because I thought I'd read Howl and loved it and as I was reading it I realised that I think I've only read the first few stanzas because that poem went on and on and on and it never ended and <laughs> the same can be said for Kaddish and a lot of the other long poems. I was not a fan. I really enjoyed some of the shorter ones. There's some really beautiful imagery in here and it talks about different social issues and stuff. Um, like one that I've tabbed is Sinflower Stanza. I'll let you pause if you wish. Um, I hope you can read that. And yeah, like there was some really beautiful like poetry in here but oh my god, some of the long ones, I was like, what are you talking about? It felt like if you've ever had a conversation with someone who is high on something like alien MDMA or maybe ketamine and they are just rambling on and on and they're telling you a story and you're sitting and you're like, uh-huh, yep. And they think they're telling a perfectly coherent story and it is just random mumble jumbo that doesn't make any sense. That's what reading some of these poems felt like, especially the long ones. <laughs> um, they just... They overstayed their welcome a little bit and I know that's probably unpopular opinion, he is a very highly acclaimed author and poet but for me personally um, the long ones like didn't do it. Howl starts off genius, I love the start of Howl but oh my god it just yeah it just um, went off the deep end to be honest for me but there is a lot of beautiful poetry in here. Um, another one I've tabbed, Mescaline, I'll let you have pause if you wish. Like I would not write this off at all and I would really be interested in reading some of his other work. I know that his main novel I believe is Naked Lunch, um, if not ignore me, but I think that's right. 
And I would be interested in reading that, but yeah, his poetry didn't hit the way I thought it was going to hit. I also finally read Johnny Panic and the Bible of Dreams by Sylvia Plath. This is a short story collection with a whole bunch of stories that she wrote throughout her entire life from her early like college years up until her death, I'm pretty sure. And they were pretty much all good. I definitely a Sylvia Plath stan, so take my word with a grain of salt, but I didn't think there was any bad stories in here, whereas normally with short story collections, there are some good ones and there's some bad ones. These are pretty much all good, to be honest. Like, obviously there were some I like more than others, but overall, I really enjoyed it. I will say, one thing about Sylvia Plath that is very evident when you read a short story collection like this is that, obviously, these were not planned to be published together. Um, they were published sporadically, like, one at a time, like, throughout the years. So when you're reading them back to back, she repeats herself a lot. Um, and there's a lot of overlap with the bell jar as well because she does write a lot about her own experiences, but she switches names and stuff around, which is interesting because you get a really deep insight into her mind and a very honest insight into the people around her um, and what she actually thinks about them because she is basically changing their name and <laughs> publishing it and thinking that they won't notice which is so funny to me um she is a girl boss but yeah like there's just some stories she tells over and over again like there's one that between this and a bell jar which i also reread back in january um and it's about when she sneaks into the hospital to view a woman giving birth that is in three different stories in here, I think, and it's in the bell jar as well. And I was like, girl, I know this is like a formative story for you and like your womanhood, but oh my god, like give us a rest. But obviously, like she wasn't planning on us reading these like one after the other, so I'll forgive her. But yeah, I feel like sometimes the criticism that I have of her is that she really does write about her own experiences more than anything else. I feel like she struggles sometimes being imaginative when it comes to adult fiction. Her children's fiction is really imaginative and fun and creative. For adult fiction, um, is barely fiction. So sometimes that's a criticism, and other times I just love it because I love her. I read like that huge book about her life, um, read Comet, and I read The Bell Jar like back to front so many times. So you know, I like getting that insight into her. But sometimes I do feel like, okay, Sylvia, like come up with something new, you know. But overall, I did really enjoy this, and I think if you're a Sylvia Plath fan, it is a must read. I love Daphne de Maurier, and the next book I read by her is The House on the Strand. This was interesting because what I thought the premise was wasn't entirely correct but also wasn't wrong. So what I thought it was is that there's this man who is addicted to drugs and then somehow he time travels and um, we just see him like going back and forth between time. That's kind of technically true but he isn't just a drug addict, like the drug he's addicted to is this drug given to him by a scientist friend that causes the person who takes it to time travel. And he's only addicted to it because he is addicted to going back in time because of this whole mystery that he's trying to unravel and solve to do with the people back in, I think it's like the 14th century. So he's not just a drug addict, like he's addicted to going back in time. But what's really interesting is that when you take the drug and then you're walking around and you're exploring the past, your body is physically moving as well, like through the real world. And we're not really sure if he is t actually time travelling or if it's all a hallucination and that's an interesting part of it but what I really found the most interesting was that because he is moving around the real world he's showing up in unlikely places, he's waking up in the middle of fields, his wife is like really suspicious because he's like disappearing in the middle of the night and like being found places and he also loses track of time like for him when he's in the time travel sometimes it's only like five minutes but then he snaps back to the real world and it's been like 14 hours. So I really loved seeing his life kind of unravel and his wife and her children um, get really suspicious and all of the drama that came with that. I found that far more interesting than the actual chill time travel stuff. All the events in like the 14th century, I think it's 14th, yeah 14th century Cornwell. Um, I didn't think they were that interesting, I just kept waiting for okay let's get this little drug trip time travel over so that then we can discover like what's went wrong while he's been away. So that's what was interesting to me and I think this drags a little bit in the time travel parts. Like when you're in the past, when you're in the 14th century or in his hallucinations, it's kind of left up in the air. It was dragging for me, but overall I did enjoy it because I loved like the drama of everything that came with it. Um, like the police get involved and stuff and there's some high stakes actually. So I would recommend this if you're already a Daphne de Maurier fan, but if you're not a Daphne de Maurier fan, this is not one I would start with at all. Um, this is more of a deep cut and I think it should stay that way. Chain of Thorns by Cassandra Clare was pretty much the only 2023 book that I was anticipating. I don't really know any upcoming releases at all, but I was very excited for this because I love the Shadowhunter series. 
and I have enjoyed the last hours, but I have to say, after reading this third and final book, and this will be non-spoilers, obviously, this is one of the weaker series in the Shadowhunter Chronicles for me. Um, I really like the characters. I think the characters are fun, they're interesting, but the drama just isn't there as much as other books. Like, there is drama, but this just felt very low stakes, and more than many others, I think that this was very romance-heavy. Um, the plot with, like, the demons and everything that goes on, which I would say is normally the A plot in the Shadowhunter series. And this one, it definitely felt like the C plot. Like, this was so romance heavy, and I liked it. I like uh, Cassandra Clare's romances, but there was no surprises in this whole series, really. There was, or especially this conclusion, anyway. It's been a while since I read the first two. But everyone that you think will end up together at, like, chapter one of book one ends up together. You know, like, there's no real stakes, there's no surprises, there's always great plot twists in her books. This series, or this finale anyway, there was like no surprises, there was no plot twists. I have actually like gasped in shock reading Cassandra Clarebrooks before and this one, I was just like, okay, this is nice, like, I like this, this is fun. So while I did enjoy this, and I think it was like a good book, compared to a lot of other series, like this one just, it just wasn't hitting right, I don't know. It was just a lot more plain, um, and I guess another thing with like there being low stakes is that because it is a prequel series to the Mortal Instruments, we know that people are going to be okay. Um, you know, like individual characters, like yeah, maybe stuff could happen to them, but like the overall Shadowhunter world, like we know it's going to be fine. So Chain of Thorns, <laughs> I feel like this is kind of the same as like my Daphne de Maria review. This series is not one that I would recommend anyone goes into if they haven't read other Shadowhunter series. This is, again, one for later on in your journey, but it's definitely still worth reading. Like, it is good. It is fun. It's just a little bit disappointing um, because it just wasn't as thrilling to me as her other series have been. Another series finale was The Speed of Truth by Caroline Logan. This is the fourth and final book in the Four Treasures series, which is a Scottish fantasy series that I have been obsessed with for the last few years. You've definitely heard me talk about it multiple times if you have been subscribed to me for a while. And this was the final book, so obviously I can't really go into any details at all. I will just say, I love this. This was not a disappointing finale at all. It wrapped up everything so nicely, all the characters come together, um, all the little storylines come together. There is some surprises, <laughs> like no shade at Cassandra Clare, but I preferred this. Um, there were surprises, there were some shocks, there was some high stakes. And overall, it was just a really fun, wild ride. This entire series has been so fun to read. And I just love this cast of characters so much. It's such a varied and interesting cast of characters. There's like demons, there's witches, there's kings and princes, there's selkies, there's a unicorn, there's like a pirate queen. Like there's so many different characters and they all just come together in such an amazing like film family. So I absolutely loved this finale. And I just, I'm not ready to say bye to these characters yet. I just love them so much. So yeah, I would highly recommend this if you are interested. The very first book is The Stone of Destiny, I believe. And definitely just give it a try. If you like fantasy, especially YA fantasy, you will love these. Um, they have everything you could ever want from like a YA fantasy series. So this is a 5 out of 5. And um, yeah, I just, I just love it. So The Magic Toy Shop is a book that I had never heard of before. I'd never heard of Angela Carter, but I obviously, as you probably know, collect these green Virago modern classics. And I just picked this up in Waterstones randomly and I read the book and it says something about creepy puppets or um, puppets that are life-size and uncannily lifelike. And I was like, okay, I am hooked straight away. And while that is definitely part of the story, it's not really the focus of the story, but I love this as well. This was another five star for me. And it follows three children who are sent to live with their aunt and her husband because, well, this is her uncle, um, because their parents die. And there they just experience this very strange, weird family dynamic with these relatives that they don't really know and they've never met before. And this story is quite scary. Honestly, it looks like it's a children's book, like the magic toy shop. Like you kind of think, okay, maybe it's for kids. This is not for kids. This is surprisingly sexual, quite dark, quite twisted. Um, there is a lot of just depravity in this and taboo topics. And I think the underlying message of the whole thing is our main character, Melanie, her growing into a woman and entering adulthood. 
And that's kind of the underlying theme of the entire book, but there's just so many like weird, creepy things that go on in this, and I absolutely loved it. I love a book that is just wild and will not apologise for it. So yeah, I really enjoyed The Magic Toy Shop. I would definitely recommend it, and I can't wait to read more about Angela Carter. I've not looked up yet what other books she's written, but after I film this video, I'm going to do that right away because I need some more of her books if they're going to be as crazy as this. So yeah, if you like creepy, weird <laughs> families and characters in miserable situations, sounds sad, sounds depressing, but you know, it's fiction. Um, this is definitely one you should look into because it was great. And I read it in like two days. I was so enthralled actually. It was so fast paced. I devoured this. Those were all the books that I read in January and February. If you have read any of them before, leave a comment down below with your thoughts. And if you have never heard of any of them or some of them before and they sound interesting to you, if you have any questions, let me know. If you just want to talk about anything, let me know in the comments. I will reply to everything. And I just love talking to you guys. And I know it's been a while. I didn't have any reason not to film videos in February and like the last half of January. I just didn't do it. Um, I'm sure if you make <laughs> content in any form you know what it's like. Sometimes there's just no inspiration but hopefully I'm back again and back to making videos. So again please leave a comment, anything at all, just talk to me down below and if you're new please subscribe and if you enjoyed this video please leave a like and all my links to everything is down below, my Goodreads, my Letterboxd, um, Instagram, that's all I use right now actually to be honest but it's all down below. So again thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video.